brought some decent weather with me this weekend for you. Yes, it's true, I'm from Canada. Not Toronto, which is what everybody here seems to know about lately. The city of Ottawa, the capital of the country. And today I'm going to do what Larry asked me to try to do. I'll try to do what he asked me to do. It's worded that way. Lathe maintenance, primarily, and then I'll try to make some shavings fly. I went out to the trailer, brought a mini lathe in. It was time, I think, to let everybody see that you don't have to have just a big lathe to work with. Besides, it's too bulky and heavy and cold right now to bring it in here and warm it up before you want to use it. I think a lot of the members out here only have a smaller lathe, so let's see what you can do with it. This is one of the ones that was used two weeks ago for the uh, hands-on session with Rudy. Happens to be Larry's lathe. And it seems like they were in a bit of a hurry to pack up the trailer at the end of the event. Because this looks miserable. I think there's a camera up above. You can see if it focuses in all kinds of debris and dirt and dust in the bottom above the motor. That's not too bad. When we use these at the fairgrounds, we'll have shavings almost covering the bed, filling the tabletop. The motors get hot. That's not a very good thing to happen. You want to get a brush, at least. Was that me? Nope. All I do is move away and I heard a rush. Oh, the ventriloquist. At least brush the dirt out of there. Move your banjos and tool rest and tail stalks out and keep the area clean if you can. It makes it a lot easier, especially if you're having to have different fittings laying on the table underneath your lathe and you end up covering it with shavings. Later on you can buy and sweep it out on a trash can. You've just sent away forty or fifty dollars worth of fittings. And that kind of makes it miserable. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm actually doing. The bed of this lathe looks nasty. Take off the tailstock. Take this out of the way. Take off my watch. You should not have anything below your elbows when you're working around anything like this. Obvious safety concerns. Once you start this up and you've got a chuck attached and a piece of wood going around, you don't want to get it hung up on anything and have you dragged in. I'm going to try to clean that off a little bit. In one of the books I've seen years and years ago, it was there, actually the Shopsmith Manual for cleaning their beds, the ways of the way they use denatured alcohol and a cloth and just wipe it on and keep wipe, cleaning it off. Denatured alcohol is a solvent. You have bits of gum and everything, resins and that, it may help to dissolve it off a bit and you just keep cleaning it down. And when you're done, they recommend using a paste wax, something like this, Johnson paste wax, to wipe on and buff it in place. That will help preserve the metal and gives you a slick surface. Now you're thinking, well, the slick surface is kind of strange because I've got attachments on the bed that I want to keep in place. If the surface is slick and you have good seating capacity on your attachments, they should stay when you lock them down. If you have dirt and debris on the bed or underneath the bottom of the tailstock or the banjo for the tool rest, they'll creep on you. And that's not a good thing either. It's happened to me a few times using other equipment you're working on a piece and the banjo slips, tailstock rams into the piece of wood that's turning at whatever speed it's turning and it gives you a little bit of a surprise. Also the tailstock won't stay locked in place when you try to tighten the tail into the head end of the lathe. So it creates an awkward situation. Clean it off. Here I'm going to just use a bit of WD-40 and a scrub pad, one of these 3M Scotch-Brite I don't know what grit that is, it doesn't matter. And just a light touch. And you also want to be sure that the lathe is solid. 
you don't have feet missing underneath of it or one leg shorter than the other. You can see all this muck coming loose here. It's not, we don't have the advantage of TV time, so you have to sit and just watch what happens in real. Okay, it's done. Fast forward. You could also use WD-40 on your lathe bed after you've turned. See, there's a bit of dirt come off of there. Just spray it on and leave it. Especially if you're working with really wet wood and if you do not have a stainless steel bed. This is just coal roll steel. It will oxidize. It will get buildup of debris and you have to go clean it all off again. If you're not going to use your lathe for a while, give it a little spray of WD-40 or some other sealer and just leave it sit. And when you're ready to use it again, just maybe take a towel and wipe it down. I'm not an expert on this. I've only been turning for about 12 years. And I've had some, the odd issue and complication come up with equipment and you just call for help. Who do you call for help? The lathe doctor. Whoever that you know has a lathe. I'm curious, how many people in this room now have been wood turning for less than two years? Look around and see how many others are in your same position. How many have at least five years experience? How many have at least 10, 15, 20? Okay, we've got over 200 years of experience in this room. There's no reason on earth if you have a problem with your equipment or you're not sure of what you're doing that you cannot get an answer. Call somebody. Well, you don't know who they are. You don't know what the number is. We have a directory. Maybe it'll get issued out to us so we can call each other. <laughs> nudge, nudge, Larry. <laughs> You're president. Let's organize. <laughs> Use the internet if you have it, yes. Similarly, okay, we've got the bed clean. Now we're going to put a banjo on it. There's only one of them, so it's not going to be dueling. Clear off any debris from the inside. And if you can notice, this is the lock mechanism. And it moves up and down with the rotating of this handle. And I know there's some folks in here that are really knowledgeable on this. If I make a mistake, I don't care if you correct me. I don't want to have it go wrong. Okay? So this should be free to move anywhere it is, rotate the lever, and it should stay where it is. It shouldn't be creeping. Similarly with the tailstock. Get it in place, lock it, and that should be solid also. Okay, we've got a lathe pretty well cleaned off, theoretically ready to use. We want to fit a piece of wood on the head end of the lathe so it can rotate. We need to secure it at the tail end. We need to put some fittings in here. This is a live center for the tail. It just fits into this, this is a tapered shaft, this is a tapered hole, similarly at the head end. It just fits in there and just holds itself by friction. But there could be some dirt and debris in that taper. The club has something called a Morse taper cleaner. These tapers are made in different sizes. Both of these ends are number two. This is a number two taper cleaner. Just make sure everything is empty. Just run this in and rotate it by hand. And pull it out. You'll get a bit of dirt and dust. Similarly at the head end. And pull it out. If there is any dirt and debris in there, 
theoretically it's taken off here now. That way you'll get a clean fit when you put your attachment in place. It'll be a positive lock. Now someplace here is a drive spur. Everybody seen one of these before? Anybody not seen one? I don't know if the camera's picking up. There we go. Four points, four spurs and a, and a center point which is spring loaded. I can show you on here. Okay, so as you drive that into the wood, that'll center it and then you just keep going until the spurs connect. So this will be put into the bed of the lathe, into the head of the lathe. Now you can take and load a piece of wood on. Any questions? Yes. Uh, yes. Mike, if, if, you're, if I'm continually having trouble with the tailstock creeping, what do I address? Is there a special washer under there or any old washer? Or what? If you've got creeping tailstock, there's a medication for that. <laughs> Usually there's a nut, other than me, all right, that's attached underneath this locking mechanism underneath the tailstock. Similarly, at the banjo also. Tighten it up a little bit. That minimizes the travel between open and closed on this. Make sure there isn't any debris and stuff either on the top side of this mechanism or even on the underside of the bed. Run your finger under there, make sure that under the bed is clear too, as well as the top surface. Because this is gripping up from underneath. This face clamps on the top. Okay. So just take a little bit of sandpaper and scratch it off. And then wipe it down again. Okay, there we go. See, other people have had similar problems. Richard? Yeah. But eventually, if it's hot enough, the dust will stick to it. They recommend not to put it on the uh, teeth of the quill because it'll not build up. Not on the quill, on the, on the ways. Yeah, on the ways, yeah. Somebody else. Okay. Hopefully this is of some help to somebody. Hey, if not, I'll go home and cook a steak. Yeah. So we think we have the lathe cleaned up, ready to go. Let's take a piece of wood try to make something.